Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint a vase shaped tree, a column shape, and an open style tree, kind of like a poplar tree. So if you're ready for this tutorial and to learn these types of trees, then let's dive in. And next we are going to do a vase shape. So it's literally going to be a V shape, kind of like a maritime pine. Uh, I don't know where they live. I think they're more Mediterranean um, weather vibe. So Spain, we have some here in California, um, but this shape is gonna be literally a cone or a V shape like so. And there's the trunk. And we've got And maybe it's a bit of a taller tree, like a maritime pine. There's other trees that have this shape too. Like so. So you can sketch that very, very lightly beforehand if you want, or you can just go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna do um, sap green and Mars black for a smokier, deeper green for this pine color and then lighten it for my first value. Make sure to dab off the excess water so we can use dry brush. Little bit more water. I'm just following that V shape. Super dry, I'm kind of liking it. Grabbing more paint for my mid-tone value. So, so far it's a lot of similar techniques, oh, different shapes. Mm -hmm. That would also ease my mind if I was a beginner painter. Yes, mm -hmm. we're using a lot of the same scrubbing techniques, the exact same painting techniques. So starting with a lighter value, then a slightly darker one, and then an even darker one for shadows. Just different shapey shapes. Still need that V shape for this one. So we're going in and adding that V. So we're pointing down. And ready for the trunk. So we're covering 10 different shapes in this video because depending on if you're painting a landscape painting, depending on where that landscape is, you'll have different varieties of trees. You could have aspens, maybe you're painting a Colorado scene. You've got some aspens or maybe the Pacific Northwest with some pines, spruce trees. So it's good to practice to practice a variety of these trees so you can paint a variety of landscapes. But it's all very much uh, the same structure and techniques, just different shapes. So this one I've got all of my leaf shapes pointing inward to create a V. So even 
the leaves that are kind of on the outer edge, they're creating that point to come back to that V shape. And then because this is a maritime pine, we've got a lot of thin branches. You can Google image what they look like. They're very pretty and they usually have a really tall trunk, but I need space for my spruce tree down there. Okay. Next, we have a columnar, column-shaped tree for a cypress tree. I just think Tuscany for these. And for a column shape, from column shape, it's very similar to the oval, but we're gonna do an oval on top of a circle. So it's creating kind of a long triangle. And we've got our leafy guys. And our trunk. So oval on top of a circle. Same thing, I'm using sap green and lemon yellow deep this time as my base color, as all my colors actually, and then just a lighter value for my base color, drying it off. Before I start, scrub a dub dub. If you were doing a landscape and you were painting like a bunch of the same tree, maybe, do you have any um, tips on painting a bunch of these together? I would paint all, if they were right next to each other, I would paint the same layer for all of them all together. So this base layer first. And then you wanna add separation between each tree with your shadow layer. So those shadows are what's gonna show that it's not just one big shrub lined up there, but that it's three individual trees or however many individual trees it is. Now I'm accentuating that bottom curve on the oval and the bottom curve on the circle. You can do a softer look with your leaves by making, just poke, poking in the color instead of having dry brush using wet and wet. So you have a soft, softer, blurrier look with the tree. You can use water to blend it in. So this one has a lot less texture because I was using wet and wet technique for each layer, the lighter value, mid-tone value, and then the shadow. And now using wet and wet for the brown trunk to bleed into the green. There you go. Cutie cypress tree for our column shape. Take me to Tuscany. Take me to Tuscany, he says. Vacation sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do an open style tree. This could be a poplar, poplar? Poplar, poplar, no, no. poplar. Poplar. Poplar, poplar, poplar. <laughs> Okie dokie. Poplar. This one's gonna be fun. So for the basic shape for this one, we have a lot of peaks going on with our branches. 
I think of this tree as like having mustaches, <laughs> two and a half mustaches. So we have mustache number one. <laughs> now you can't unsee that. <laughs> So it's like a really weird, you could even do ovals for the mustache first and then a half of the mustache. So we've got the leaf texture kind of following that, but that's where our shadow will be is on these stashes. And then we've got a lot of branches happening. Like, sir, obviously doing this extremely fast, but that's the shape. It's an open shape and we've got mustaches. So oval, oval, two. You could just do two ovals and then one oval <laughs> and maybe a little section over here, like that. So instead of mustaches, I guess we could just say it's two ovals, <laughs> but I like mustaches better. It's so. totally, everyone's already picturing. The stash. Mustaches. So for this one, I'm also going to kind of scrub down with these flicks for my texture for the leaves. Instead of just kind of scrubbing in circles, I'm gonna do flicking motions that go downward. I've got my light yellow green, still using dry brush unless you prefer the, I'm gonna do this angle, the wet on wet, but I'm gonna cover the first stash and also leaving any gaps of white space that happen to just randomly come about from using dry brush. There's my first stash, scrub dub dub. Second stash. Did you say what landscape this one might be found in? This could be, I don't know where poplar trees live. Let me know in the comments. Yeah, maybe hit up them comments. The tree, the tree people. <laughs> tree people. I am really not that knowledgeable on trees. I just know their shapes. And then some more mustache up here, but it's smaller. <laughs> if you had any um, questions about if I was a weirdo, just watch my YouTube videos. What? <laughs> I'm just picturing some people probably just love that and some people are just like, oh, uh, next video. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Uh, too weird. That's okay. Yes, I don't care. So following that bottom edge of the stash. As you can see, I, I keep flicking down. Maybe these stashes intersect right here so it's not so... It's not, it's not a word. <laughs> not a word. And then a dark green with Mars black and sap green for my last touches to the tree. It's a little too black. Needs more green. So this is an open tree style tree like a poplar. Popular, popular. Can't wait to see the branches shining through this one. Yep, it's gonna be real nice. It's gonna be really good. 
just adding in some shadow to some of these up here. Here we go. Trunkies and branchies. I'm gonna add some yellow ochre to this branch or a more, I don't know, a lighter tan branch. Where am I? Oak, oak. Wow, look at those. Yeah, just lightly flicking my brush. Dink and flicker. <laughs> yes. Is that what it is? I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. You don't know that reference? Mm. I don't know if I got it right, though. Mm. It's The Office. Um, Daryl is, is teaching Michael like language from the streets. Oh. But he's uh, messing with Michael. Right, right. Oh, I think you're right, yeah. I think it's Dink and Flicka. <laughs> Whatever episode that is, it's a good one. I love The Office. So I like to flick my brush down. I feel like I can get thinner strokes if I draw my or paint in my lines for the branches by coming down you might prefer going up flicking up just play with it you know Thank you so much for watching this part of a tree series that we have done on my channel. If you want to see the full video or any of the other parts of these trees, we have a 10 watercolor tree shapes video that covers all 10 of these shapes. We just did a few of those 10 in this video. So if you want to watch the full video, check it out here, or we have all of the different parts on a playlist that you can check out as well that will link in the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching our videos. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to our channel. All of the, that engagement really helps us boost this channel and share it with more people and help spread the love of watercolor. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.